I'd like to say a few words um, as a volunteer firefighter for 38 years in the United States. It becomes part of your life. It becomes part of your family. That day affected everybody and continues to this day. I have a few words that I wrote down and I'll read them to you. Ten years today, the world watched in horror as the Twin Towers burned and then went crashed into the ground. They watched as fire fires burned in the Pentagon and a beautiful, serene patch of earth in Shanksville, Pennsylvania was scorched with hateful fires. On September 11, 2001, we mourn the innocent lives that were lost. We mourn the loss of our freedom and we mourn the loss of our innocence. A group of cowards robbed the 9-11 victims and their families of that innocence. Ten years later, we gather here today to remember what happened on September 11, 2001. We gather to remember the lives that we lost and to remember the heroes who were born from that tragedy. We are here together to celebrate the brave firefighters, police, and emergency medical workers who gave the ultimate sacrifice on that clear, crisp day. In New York City, the firefighters rushed into the Twin Towers with regard for their own lives, without. They ran past the flames, ran up the never-ending stairs, and tried to save lives. Sadly, many of them lost their own lives in this process. 343 firefighters, 73 people from the police unit. We will never forget what they did on that day. We will never forget the risk that all emergency personnel take every day to keep our citizens safe. September 11th was a day that will look infinite, but it is equally important to remember what happened on September 12th. In the midst of the smoldering ashes, death and despair, a new hope was born. The terrorists tried to break America, but they didn't succeed. In the eyes of such horrific tragedy, America, in some ways, the world, were united in love, remembrance, and hope. The terrorist attacks on September 11th allowed the world to recognize the bravery, courage, heroism that emergency personnel no, exhibit each and every day by just going to work. Whether they are responding to a deliberate attack on our freedom or a natural disaster, such as the tornado, which we all experienced a few weeks ago. They are putting their lives on the line to help our citizens. No matter what the crisis, we can count on our brave firefighters, police, and rescue personnel to protect and serve. On the 10th anniversary of the tragic events of September 11th, let us take a moment to recognize the sacrifices that emergency personnel make for us each and every day here in Aruba. We will never forget the events of September 11th or the innocent lives that were lost that day. In their memory, please pause for a moment of silence. Thank you, and God bless all. In the closing ceremony, uh, the Honorable Rabbi Mario Garbage will give a final benediction. Still unformed and white, the darkness over the face of the deep. For all the politics, bombs, and battles in the wake of September 11, 2001, 
It's like the mourners is the more personal and sensual vacancy. The absence of touch and sight and voice is the hearing of personal history. How could one human do this to another? I ask the question, but I don't have an answer. We have to recognize that absolute evil exists, and it must be fought. This is a difficult task for a multicultural and free society that is encumbered with a broad definition of tolerance. Media, universities, and politically correct pundits declare that everyone is right and there are no absolutes. Actually, this is a distorted definition of tolerance. Tolerance is disagreement through mutual understanding and discussion, not violence. So let us be clear. To murder innocent people is evil, absolutely. To terrorize is evil, absolutely. This is true whether the perpetrator is white, black or yellow, Christian, Jew or Muslim. We cannot fight evil if there is no evil. Evil must be called evil without the media, government, and in public discourse. And in order to defeat evil, we have to be dedicated to good as fiercely as our enemies are dedicated to evil. In 1861, with civil war raging, Abraham Lincoln united Americans in a day of prayer. We all yearn to see evil defeated. So we turn to our loving Father and ask Him to guide us in the proper course of action and to oversee its success. Surely our God has the power to get this done. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yet though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil for thou art in me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Action must go hand in hand with prayer. Action shows that your prayer is serious. In our individual life, when faced with a crisis, with a crisis of health, wealth, success, or aggravation, at the same time that we pray, we act. Nobody would dream of asking God for a good job and then sitting down to wait for a knock on the door. In crisis times, what action shall we take? How can we begin to make a difference? Spread clarity. Educate others about the true definition. A terrorist is anyone who purposely harms innocent civilians. Finally, we have to close the ranks. The entire civilized world has to be completely united in this struggle for survival. But around what will we unite? A profound tool for unity is the concept of monotheism. Any human who belongs in a loving, all-powerful God, the basis of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, also believes in a God who wants mankind to live in peace and brotherhood. At this desperate time in world history, as the forces of evil try to divide and terrorize us into submission, each of us should turn to the universal God, creator of us all. We ask for the courage, wisdom and dedication to enable us to win this struggle against the evil part of terrorism. In truth, if ever there were a time when the saying, actions speak louder than words, 
was appropriate, this would seem to be good. Certainly the actions of the heroes in the Herculean rescue effort speak volumes about the value of human life and death. And certainly the actions of the thousands who waited in lines for hours to donate blood speak clearly about caring for one's fellow man or woman. But cataclysmic events also call for actions of a different strain actions of a very personal nature. We can ask more of ourselves. We can demand of ourselves that we stay truly human, living with the ongoing awareness of the sacred soul God has breathed into each of us. May the memory of all the victims and heroes of 9-11 live forever in the holy sanctuary of the hearts of all men of good will and inspire us to serve God and his creation in truth, goodness, and peace. Amen. In closing, again, I'd like to thank everybody for participating. I'd like to personally thank Chief Takula, Chief Kelly, for their help in organizing this event, Prime Minister for attending, all our guests, family and friends, and our emergency personnel. When people walk around the streets of Aruba, and if you see a person in uniform representing Fire, police, emergency. Just say hello and say thank you. A thank you goes a long way. These people protect us, put their lives on the line. In New York City and most major cities around the world, there are fire boxes, as you see in the front. They're all numbered. The fire box for the World Trade Center was box five, 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 five. We'll end the ceremony by chiming the bells of fives. <laughs>